Please welcome Jano Kostad, Sprint, Federal Agency for Disruptive Innovation. Hi, everyone. I have the pleasure to lead the challenge program at Sprint, the Federal Agency for Disruptive Innovation. And I would like to especially welcome the international community in that breakthrough city of Berlin. And I know some of you have arrived already yesterday in the, in the afternoon. You were greeted by a typical autumn day in Berlin. Gray, cold, rainy, really unpleasant. And that's not really just bad news for you as a visitor, but it's also bad news for the renewable power system that we need to build. It is the time when we need to turn on the lights, turn up the heating, but it's at the same time the time when wind and solar don't provide energy. So we need to decouple the supply of renewable power from the availability of wind and solar. And there's no one better to do that than the next startup, Reverion, in which we trust and believe because we've worked together with them for over a year now in one of our sprint challenges. And I think you will trust in them as well. So meet us with us, Stefan Hermann of Reverion. Breaking the wall to climate positive power. <laughs> Stefan Hermann, Reverion. Thank you very much, Jano. Hi, everyone. You know, still today, about 85% of all energy is provided through combustion of fossil fuels, mostly in outdated power plants like these. They are inefficient, they are not flexible, they emit billions of tons of CO2, and they don't fit the requirements of a fully renewable energy system. That's why we are building the power plant of the future. So what does a power plant of the future need to have? It needs to be efficient, and ours is the most efficient power plant that you can imagine, with 80% electric efficiency. It's also the most flexible one because it's reversible, so it can also run backwards as a power to gas unit. It's a fully containerized, automated, plug and play solution that we will scale through mass manufacturing. And with the right fuel, it can even be CO2 negative. This is what it looks like in reality. And we can compare it to the existing technologies. So typically in decentralized generation, you find these kind of combustion engines that burn natural gas, biogas, or hydrogen in the future and uh, generate electricity, but they are very inefficient. They only achieve about 40% conversion to power. Also, all the carbon that comes into the combustion engine through the fuel is essentially vented to the atmosphere in the off gas and thereby lost. The best in class competition today are fuel cell based systems that can push up the efficiency to about 60% but still also emit all the carbon into the atmosphere. What we have done is we take these exact very same fuel cells, but we have essentially reinvented the power plant around the fuel cell to boost the efficiency even further and achieve 80% electric <coughs> conversion efficiency. On top, there is no off gas anymore. Instead, we produce a pure CO2 stream, which then becomes a valuable resource instead of an emission. On top of that, we can, for the first time, leverage on an additional uh, property of the fuel cells, namely reversibility. And this means we can reverse the process, take in excess power, and produce gas when there's too much solar and wind. Out of this technology platform, we have created two product streams. One for operation on biogas, so a renewable feedstock, and the other one specifically working with hydrogen, for long-duration energy storage, for which we are proud to be sponsored by Sprint. These product lines have different uh, properties. For the biogas, we have CO2 negative power generation and double efficiency compared to the traditional combustion engines in place today. For the hydrogen part, we are aiming for long-duration energy storage with revolutionary high efficiency for a gas to uh, for power to gas to power system of 75%. Let's look at the biogas case a bit more closely from the customer side. For the customers who are typically um, own a biogas plant today, so a fermentation part with a combustion engine that produces power and they sell the power to the grid, transitioning from the gas engine to our technology essentially means, first of all, they double the power output because of the double efficiency. Secondly, they produce green CO2, which is a valuable commodity of the future. Thirdly, they can also reverse the power plant, and when the engine has to shut down normally, they can essentially use the same plant to produce green hydrogen or even green methane and replace natural gas directly, which enables also seasonal energy storage. 
On top of that, because of the flipping of the process, they can offer much more flexibility to the power grid, and with that, help in stabilization and earn from that. This is, of course, very appealing as a package to the customers. That's why we are facing tremendous traction, roughly 100 million euros in pre-orders collected with, within just one year since we went to the market. Of course, this is very nice, but it has to work in practice. And we have just set up our pilot plant, full-size uh, power plant, next to biogas plant uh, a few weeks ago. And we're now gearing up to essentially start into series production and scale this to 100 uh, units a year in two years from now. So I'm Stefan from Rivarian. We are making the power plants of the future with the highest efficiency possible, carbon negative, and introducing sector coupling <coughs> with just one technology. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to your questions. Just two seconds before, not bad. OK, so you saw it's fast paced. So let's go with the questions. Jury, you have your priority. Yes, we have a first question here. Thank you very much for the microphones. Thank you. Um, Hi, Stefan. Um, thanks for the great pitch. Can you tell us something about the production ramp up? Yes, indeed. So um, essentially, we are now entering into the first uh, phase of uh, series production. We call it pre-series production. And we are now uh, essentially planning to build three power plants in, in parallel uh, in, within the next four months. And for, from there on, of course, uh, we will also increase the production rate also through externalization, etc. So we have a detailed roadmap to get to 100 systems in, in two years from now. Thank you. Next question, please. Don't be shy, I know it's technical, but you know, yes, thank you. Can we have the microphone here in the front, please? Thank you very much. I actually wanted to ask a different question, but as you just mentioned, that you will have um, 100 systems in, in, in a couple of years. So my question would be, OK, what does it mean on a revenue perspective? And maybe it would also be helpful for us to get a little bit uh, more the, um, the ROI on the customer side. So. What or how long is the ROI for them for the investment? Thanks. Yeah, so the payback time uh, of the whole unit, uh, not considering debt financing, is about five years. If you consider only the equity part, it's a payback in one year. And um, you were asking also about the uh, production scale, let's say, or the, the revenues. So um, we are selling two different versions, a 100 kilowatts unit um, for, for around 600,000 euros and uh, 500 kilowatt version for 2.5 million, and it's, it will be a mixture of the two, but uh, it will be roughly uh, 100 million euros worth of revenues. Thank you. We have a question at the back, if the jury is not uh, ready yet. Yes, don't forget to show me your question on your card, please. Thank you. You go on, please, sir. Yes, uh, only a quick question. What's the expected lifetime of these modules, given that catalyst poisoning is always the number one headache? Well, yes. Uh, of course, uh, we have a very uh, elaborate gas cleaning system, which eliminates all the hydrogen sulfate and all other trace substances. So essentially, we run the fuel cells on very clean gas. So um, there is no detrimental effect on the fuel cells besides the normal aging. The typical lifetime of the fuel cells is 40,000 hours today will increase in the future. Um, so we expect to exchange the fuel cells every five years. But we cover this with a maintenance contract for the customers. Great. Thank you. The chairman of the jury has a question for you. Wait for the microphone. Thank you very much. So how would you rate the defensibility of your technology? I mean, talking about other competitors, which are not the typical fuel companies, um, but um, those who are operating in your space. Yes, um, so we have six patent families, which we have licensed from the Technical University of Munich, where we spun out, and they are already granted uh, partially. So the older ones are granted already, and uh, so we have a certain amount of protection from these patents. Of course, we also have trade secrets, quite a lot, uh, that we have built up through the years, and uh, this is giving us at least a three to four year um, head start uh, over any competition. And we have solved a lot of specific problems dedicated to our design that is really uh, necessary to solve for this 80% efficiency. I love trade secrets. This sounds great. <laughs> okay. 
We, no, I think we, I mean, it's 20 seconds. If you have a really super short, no, right? No? Good, anyway, that was great. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>